Are the Koreas finally on a path to peace? In a historic summit meeting on April 27, 2018, South Korean President Moon Jae-in and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un agreed to work toward complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and seek a permanent end to the 1950s Korean War. In a theatrical series of events surrounded by cameras, the leaders hugged, shook hands, and even planted a unity pine tree using soil and water from both countries. But some experts argue that until the commitments from both leaders translate into policy, it could be too soon to celebrate. I'm Versha, this is Now This World, and on this episode, we're diving into what exactly happened at that meeting in the demilitarized zone, and what this all means for the future of North and South Korea. The meeting was full of both concrete and symbolic significance. In the first inter-Korean summit in more than a decade, the leaders met in the truce village of Panmunjom, where the Korean armistice was signed in 1953. Armistice was designed to be a temporary ceasefire measure until a peace agreement could be reached. Spoiler alert, it never was. But now, it looks like that official peace treaty could be on the horizon. Following a half hour of intense, private conversation out of the reach of reporters' microphones, the two Korean leaders sat side by side and signed the Panmunjom Declaration. Here's what it said. The Koreas will pursue peace talks with China and the U.S., as well as seek support from the international community to completely denuclearize the region. That would be a big deal, considering just months ago, Kim warned the U.S. that North Korea's nuclear forces were a reality and not an empty threat. Though, as experts have pointed out, the agreement does not signal precisely how they intend to denuclearize. Throughout 2017, Kim tested intercontinental ballistic missiles reportedly powerful enough to reach the U.S. mainland and a nuclear bomb seven times stronger than the one the U.S. dropped on Hiroshima. And remember this? North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. The Panmunjom Declaration signals a clear move away from conflict and toward a path of peace, not only with South Korea, but in the greater international landscape. It also proposes plans to field a joint sports team, turn the DMZ into a peace zone, establish a joint liaison office with resident representatives from both sides, and a commitment for families divided by the war to reunite. The leaders also agreed to continue frequent talks in person and on the phone. And in more symbolic moves, Kim Jong-un became the first North Korean leader to cross the border into South Korea since the war. And in what appeared to be an unscripted move, Kim took Moon Jae-in's hand, inviting him across a demarcation line into North Korea for a few seconds. Kim even proclaimed a, quote, new history between the Koreas. He thanked the press, and he said he wanted Koreans to be able to move freely between the North and the South. Since the talks, North Korea has promised to sync its clocks back with South Korean time, which was previously set 30 minutes behind the North. So, what's the catch? This puts pressure on the White House, and with Kim holding the cards now, some suggest he could be using this agreement to drive wedges between South Korea and the U.S. and China and Japan. Even that Kim might hold the promise of denuclearization in exchange for a reduced American presence in the South. Now, President Trump is holding out, tweeting that the U.S. should be proud of what's happening between the Koreas, but that, quote, only time will tell. We've heard this kind of talk before. We know that North Korea means something else by the concept of denuclearization than we think we hear with our Western ears. And I haven't seen even any realistic discussion of what would be the first steps. President Trump's going to have to rein in his more ambitious goals and yet still drive a relatively hard line and not give away too much for an interim or partial agreement. It's true that these talks between the North and the South aren't the first of their kind. In the 1970s, then North Korean leader Kim Il-sung wrote a letter to U.S. President Jimmy Carter proposing a peace treaty with South Korea. 
and that never materialized. Similar commitments and calls for action on a peace treaty and denuclearization came in 1992, 1994, 2005, and 2010. Still, some argue that the tone of this meeting was just different. Kim Jong-un described the people of North and South Korea as linked by blood as a family and compatriots who cannot live separately. So will this inter-Korean summit prove any different? Trump has promised to meet with Kim Jong-un, but the outcome of the summit all comes down to concrete policy steps, and we'll keep our eyes on it. In the meantime, be sure to check out our other coverage of North and South Korea. Thanks for watching Now This World, and don't forget to like and subscribe.